Hey everybody, JC here with another TNI toy review, and today's review is in association with JediInsider.com, your number one news source for everything Star Wars. And for today's review, we're going to be taking a look at the upcoming Star Wars The Black Series 6 inch First Order Flame Trooper from Hasbro. Now, this figure is not out yet, but I did manage to get my hands on one early. It comes packaged in the same style of packaging we've seen with the other Black Series figures. You've got the black box and the figure clearly displayed with that red background. Down below, you have an image of the character and the name. On the side, you have that red border, and it tells us that this is figure number 16 in the series. And then on the back of the packaging, we have a brief bio in multiple languages. Okay, so let's get this open and take a look at what's inside. Okay, so here's a look at the figure outside of the packaging. Now, before we look at the figure itself, let's first take a look at the accessories that it comes with. Okay, so this figure comes with the flamethrower that is done in a black and white plastic. You've got some uh, red dots on the back here for controls, I guess, and you also have some silver, or I guess... It's hard to tell if that's silver or white. I think it's silver with some silver tabs as well, just for some added detail. And then up at the front, you've got some black markings, and you've got black on the very front of the rifle. So this looks pretty true to what we see in the trailers and stuff for the Flame Trooper. And again, like with all the First Order Stormtroopers, you know, these guys all have these black and white weapons. And the weapon itself is a kind of a soft plastic, so it does have flexibility, but it comes out of the plastic, at least mine did, pretty straight, so no complaints there with warping. And then it's got this hose that attaches, it's not removable, actually I take that back, it is removable from the gun itself. You just uh, snap it, there's a hole on the end of the hose, and there's a little tab at the bottom of the handle. So you can remove the hose um, on the weapon if you want to. And then the backpack itself, the hose is attached to the backpack, so it's not removable from the backpack. And the hose itself is just done with a, a flexible type plastic. And you've got some ridges to make it look like a hose, which looks pretty good. And then the backpack itself, again, it's just black and, and white with some red uh, coloring on it for like controls and stuff. And again, looks pretty true to what we see in the, uh, the trailers for this character. Now the backpack itself attaches to the back of the figure and they've actually, instead of just giving it a peg like you normally see, uh, or a hole, a peg on the backpack and a hole on the figure, they've actually given a peg and a hole on the backpack and a hole and a peg on the figure for, I guess, to secure it extra tight. So you basically, you plug it in so that the, you know, the peg on the backpack plugs into the hole on the figure and then the peg on the figure plugs into the hole on the backpack. So, and it, you know, like I said, it, it fits nice and tight, but you can't really turn it once you plug it in. You can't turn the backpack on the back at all, which, you know, you don't really need to. And then the hose is plenty long enough so that you can attach it to the rifle and then um, have the figure hold it in, in the right hand. You could actually, if you wanted to, have him hold it in the left hand as well. The hose will reach over to his left hand as well. And just if you were wondering, the gun that comes with the Disney Elite diecast figure and the one that comes with this Hasbro one look almost identical. The Elite Series one is a little bigger, but as far as the sculpting detail and everything, they look almost identical to one another. Now as for the backpacks between the Disney Elite and the, and the Black Series one, I guess I have to give the details a little bit nicer on the Disney Elite one, only because... On the Disney Elite one, they've actually sculpted this little antenna that's on the back. It's a separate, you know, sculpted piece on there. Whereas on the Black Series one, they've just looks like they've just painted it on there. The Disney Elite figure also has those extra wires that stick out the side. Now I'm guessing that's probably more movie accurate. However, I can definitely live without those on the Black Series one. So for the figure itself, uh, basic paint applications, pretty much like we've seen with all the First Order Stormtroopers in this line. You've got the white with the black markings throughout the body. So no real, uh, you know, detailed paint applications, no dirt or anything on the armor. It's a very clean looking figure. Again, just like we've seen with all the, all the First Order Stormtrooper type figures in this line. You've got the black markings on the helmet and the eye slits are actually sculpted in there as well as the line work around the helmet. Again, very similar to what we've seen with other figures in the line. You've got the little silver tabs down at the bottom. You've got the black markings on the chest. He's got the belt with this uh, pouch on the side, and the pouch is a, a rubber type material, and it's just glued to the belt. And the belt is a separate piece from the figure, but it's not doesn't appear to be removable. He's also got this thing on the back of his belt, which looks almost like a handle. I don't know exactly what the purpose of that is, 
but it's part of the belt itself. And he's got the little white, I guess, buckles or whatever these are on the front. He's got a little uh, strap around his thigh, which, you know, not super detailed. And again, when you compare this Black Series figure with the Disney Elite diecast figure, sculpting and paint applications are almost identical. Um, obviously, the diecast one has, is made of diecast metal, so you have a little bit shinier effect with that with the metal. But otherwise, it's pretty much the exact same kind of paint applications and sculpting detail. There's very little difference between these two figures. Okay, so the figure stands just a little bit over six inches tall. He's about the same height as the other uh, Stormtroopers in this line. So here's our regular First Order Stormtrooper, and they're about the same height. Here's a Snow Trooper. And again, they're about the same height. The Flame Trooper is maybe a little bit taller than the Snow Trooper. And then Kylo Ren. And Kylo Ren maybe is a hair taller, especially with the hood. But again, they're pretty close to the same height. Okay, so articulation is not too bad with this figure. It's definitely better than the Disney Elite version. The head is on a ball hinge joint, so he can look left and he can look right and he can look down and he can look up a little bit and he can pivot his head to the left and the right as well. Arms are attached with your standard ball hinge joints at the shoulder. Now with the shoulder pads, he can get his arm out about that much, which is pretty good. And he's got good rotation there at the arm. He's got a single hinged elbow, so he can only bend his elbow about that much. And he does have the swivel at the elbow. He's got the swivel at the hands, and then he's got the hinges on the top and the bottom of the hands on both hands for that kind of up and down movement. You don't get a whole lot of up and down, but you get some. You've got the midsection joint, so he's got a rotation there at the midsection. He does not have any kind of ab crunch with the armor. Legs are attached with ball joints, so he can do the splits about that much. He can get his leg forward pretty good, and he can do his leg back about that much. He's got a thigh swivel. He's got a double jointed knee, so he's got pretty good bending at the knee. And then he's got the hinges on the feet, so he's got the up and down movement. And then he's got the ankle pivot. And then two peg holes on the bottom of his feet. Okay, so that's my review. Overall, I like this figure. I like the detail on it. I like the articulation. I, I definitely think I like this Black Series version over the Disney Elite diecast version. You know, no offense to anyone who, who likes the diecast ones, but I, I prefer the Black Series, mainly because of the added articulation. You can get them in better poses and stuff. Otherwise, I'd say they're almost identical. So this figure, as I mentioned before, has not yet been released. I managed to grab mine off of eBay. It was an eBay seller here in the United States. I don't know how they got this wave in already, but, but they did, and I managed to grab one. I paid a little bit extra than the regular $20 price, but not too much. So I don't know when this wave is going to actually be slated for release at retail. Probably January, maybe even February. We're still waiting on the waves with like the General Hux and the regular TIE Fighter pilot and the Imperial Snow, Snow Trooper to be released. So, which hopefully will be soon. But again, I don't know when this actual wave will see release. We'll have a full gallery of images up at JediInsider.com. There's a link in the description below. And as always, leave a comment. Let us know what you think. If you're so inclined, please like the video. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. And until next time, I'll catch you later.